China's real. Their economy's coming back, coming back fast. We get numbers every month from Macau, the Chinese gambling mecca, and they were just spectacular. 247% increase versus the prior year. People are only looking for 147%. Incredibly, though, those numbers are still down 51% from 2019, which shows you two things. First, that Chinese travelers are coming back. But second, maybe we're just at the beginning of this move. Remember, when our economy opened post-COVID, we saw a rush to travel and spend and go out. We learned that it's just human nature. It's why I keep talking about the long on money, short on time thesis. People would enjoy life while they can in the wake of something that was horrifying. Chinese people are no different. I think the analysts are just waking up to the importance of the Chinese reopening. But we started to get some orders from over there, and I bet that's just the tip of the iceberg. Today, in a little notice release, PPG announced it's going to have better than expected quarter. That's in part because of higher Chinese orders related to aerospace. Plus, when we heard the news that OPEC Plus is cutting back 1.1 million barrels of oil per day in production, we knew that without the China rebound, this simply wouldn't matter all that much. That's how much demand has drifted. But once China picks up, you're going to see some stabilization in pricing that at least is going to be leaving oil higher than where it was last week. I know the China theme tends to confound people. Aren't we in a pseudo-cold war with their government? Aren't they furious at our close ties with Taiwan or our refusal to sell them highest-end semiconductors and semiconductor capital equipment? Sure, but that's really only part of the story. We still buy tons of stuff from China. At the same time, I think the Chinese people love American stuff. And the Chinese Communist Party doesn't seem anxious to shut that down. Now, we know the Chinese government likes Tesla. The numbers that came out this weekend confirm that, although the margins in market share may turn out to be suboptimal. Although the Chinese Communist Party is at odds with the U.S. government, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have all that much bearing on commerce. We know there are so many culturally shared concepts between the two countries that you can bank on some American companies making things well in China and selling them there. Take Nike. Even during the COVID downturn, Nike was putting up great numbers in China. Now, we own three companies for the Charitable Trust that have done remarkably well in China. Starbucks opens a new store every nine hours there because the chain's so popular with the Chinese people. S.A. Lauder's probably more in touch with the Chinese consumer than any other global consumer packaged goods company. Their high-level executives have made a point of spending a lot of time there, staying in touch with youthful buyers. I think the coming quarter will reflect that. Finally, there's Apple. What can I say? When I see Tim Cook speaking to people in China, I'm reminded that China's still trying to bring hundreds of millions of people into the middle class. No, I'm not going soft on China. I know their government doesn't seem to want to create a level playing field with American companies. But say what you will about the Chinese Communist Party, they did listen to their people, and they pivoted. They changed course on COVID because they didn't want to be on the wrong side of history. Now China's economy is coming back much faster than expected, and I think you can bank on many more good things to come. I like to say there's always a market somewhere, and I promise you I'll find it just for you right here on Made Money. I'm Jim Cramer. See you tomorrow. Last call starts now.